In this video, we're going to derive a formula for the slope of a tangent line to a polar curve. Once we've got that done, we're going to apply our new formula to the lima sum, r of theta equals 3 plus sine theta, at the angle theta equals pi over 3. Then we're going to plot the tangent line at that point, which means we need to find the actual point on the curve and plug into the point slope formula. So I'll start with a quick reminder of the conversion from polar coordinates into rectangular coordinates. And if you're curious where this comes from, I'll link back to the video where I first introduced polar coordinates. And then we're looking for slope, which I could write as dy dx. And then I could divide by d theta in the numerator and denominator. So this gives me dy d theta divided by dx d theta. And I refer back to my polar form of x and y. And this is more complicated than it might look at first, because r is definitely a function of theta. If you look at our example, it's explicitly stated right there, r is a function of theta. This means we have to use the product rule when we differentiate. So dy d theta is going to be r prime of theta, sine theta. So we differentiate the first piece, leave the second piece alone, plus r of theta times the derivative of sine theta, which is cosine theta. Similarly, for x, we get r prime of theta cosine theta. And then the derivative of cosine is negative, so I have a minus sign r of theta sine theta. All right, so there's our formula for the slope of a polar curve. Now let's get into the example. Just as a quick note before I start, r prime of theta for this polar curve is just going to be cosine theta. Next, we get into writing dy dx. So I have r prime of theta sine theta plus r of theta itself. And for this curve, that's 3 plus sine theta cosine theta, and then divided by r prime of theta, which is cosine, times another cosine, minus a 3 plus sine theta sine theta. So this is a pretty complicated expression. We can simplify things a little bit by recognizing some trig identities. So in the numerator, I see cosine times sine, and I get another cosine times sine when I distribute the cosine into the 3 plus sine theta. Well, 2 times sine times cosine is just the sine of twice the angle. So I have sine of 2 theta. And my remaining term there is a 3 cosine theta. In the denominator, something similar happens. I have one term that's cosine squared. And then when I distribute the sine into the 3 plus sine theta, I get a negative sine squared. And cosine squared minus sine squared is the cosine of twice the angle. So there's a nice symmetry to this. My remaining term in the denominator is negative 3 sine theta. Now I evaluate my slope at theta equals pi over 3. And of course, pi over 3 and 2 pi over 3 are special angles. The sine of 2 pi over 3 is root 3 over 2. The cosine of pi over 3 is 1 half. Cosine of 2 pi over 3 is negative 1 half. Sine of pi over 3 is root 3 over 2. So to clean things up, I'm going to multiply the top and bottom by 2. That kills every one of these denominators, so those are gone and I arrive at my slope, and I'm going to factor negative 1 out in front of this thing. The whole denominator was negative, and that gives me a 1 plus 3 root 3 in the denominator. So next, we need to find the point at which this tangent line touches. So we go back to these conversion formulas, x equals r cosine theta, and r as a function of theta for this curve is 3 plus sine theta. And I plug in my angle, and we evaluate the special angles. And when I combine like terms in the first part, that's a 6 over 2 plus root 3 over 2. I then multiply by 1 half, which changes the denominator into a 4. So I have a 6 plus root 3 over 4. Then we find our y coordinate. And when I evaluate the special angles, I get 3 plus root 3 over 2, all multiplied by root 3 over 2. And again, I'm going to combine like terms in the first part. And that gives me a 6 plus root 3 over 2, and then multiply by the square root of 3 over 2. That makes my denominator 4. Finally, I distribute the root 3 in the numerator, and I get 6 root 3 plus 3, and that's all divided by 4. Okay, now we have the slope of the tangent line, and we have the point that the tangent line touches at, and we're going to use the point-slope formula. That's y minus y naught equals m times the quantity x minus x naught, and we solve for y. And so now we just put all these ugly fractions in here, and we've got the equation of our tangent line. So we solve for y there because that's the form we need it in to put it into a computer algebra system or other plotting software. And we can plot this thing just to verify it's doing what a tangent line should do. And it looks good. Just a couple things to notice here is that we're definitely at the angle theta equals pi over 3. That's what that particular axis is on the polar grid. And my tangent line is touching at exactly one point, so it looks good. If you find the math content on Zach's Lab helpful, click on the Zach's Lab logo on the right to browse playlists and subscribe to the channel.
I produce dozens of new videos per month, and subscribing is the easiest way to find new content. Thanks for watching.